Hello again and welcome back. So in the last video, we looked at how to make these really kind of cool interactive maps using the PyViz library, which is built upon the uh, JavaScript library uh, Viz. And that was nice because we could take the data, represent it in an interactive map and incorporate it into a website because it's rendering everything in HTML code. That's fantastic. Now you might be asking yourself, if we can do all that there, why would we even bother with matplotlib? And the reason is quite simple. Matplotlib is still kind of the industry standard. And one of the reasons why it is, is because it matplotlib handles a lot more than just network maps. That's just how we're kind of using it in, in this series. It's used for all different mathematical applications, for making bar graphs, plot graphs, etc., and other things as well. And it's also the industry standard for creating social network maps still, at least uh, with Python, for the main reason that you can kind of create very dynamic maps that represent the data using different algorithms to determine a graph layout. So as far as I can tell from the PyViz documentation and my own personal use of it, I believe PyViz limits you to just spring-loaded layouts. So the way in which graphs are uh, measured and created is either by using force-directed graphs, in which case you have an algorithm that takes into, a cal uh, takes into account a node size, the quantity of node neighbors, to determine some kind of visual representation of the space between two given nodes. Now, the way in which this occurs is a few different ways. Uh, the three most common ways are uh, essentially a spring-loaded graph in which the uh, algorithm calculates and re uh, essentially repels uh, data uh, uh, nodes away from a centric node. So a very powerful node will be at the center of the map and it will repel away the weaker nodes. Another way that this occurs is by attraction. So the more connections a node has, the more concentrated other nodes are around it. So this is the way, the two standard ways for kind of creating graphs for a long time. And then in the, I believe it was the late 90s, early 2000s, um, two scholars named Fruchtman and Ryan Gold created an algorithm that accounted for both of these things, both attraction and repulsion at the same time. And the result is what's known today as the fruchtman ryan Gold uh, algorithm, which allows for you to have a force-directed graph, so a graph that is uh, visualized and, and created based upon some kind of for, uh, direction and force being applied to it, that both takes into account a node's strength for repulsion and attraction. And so what you get are typically nicer layouts that more uh, accurately represent clusters of data. And in the next video, we're going to look at cluster analysis and, uh, and look at that in more depth. For right now, understand that we're going to be going through a couple of these different ways we can create different layouts in matplotlib and networkx all in Python. So let's go ahead and make a very simple map. We're not going to stick with our Tom and Jerry's in this one because the actual uh, labels don't matter anymore. We don't care about any of that. All we want to do is we want to create a network map that's just kind of essentially randomized. So I'm just going to create a simple for loop. For i in range, I'm going to say 100. I'm going to create an edge for g.add uh, edge. And I'm going to create an edge of i and i times i. So essentially i and its square. I'm going to add an edge, and you can do this however you want to. I'm just adding this so we have uh, a fairly dynamic graph. i plus, uh, and we'll have i connected to i plus 20. And we'll have another one. Oh, we've got to add the edge. And we'll have i connected to, uh, what's another thing we can do? Um, I don't know. Um, let's do i times 2. Why not? Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to ensure that every node is connected to at least uh, three other points in our network map. I hope it comes out looking all right. Uh, let's go ahead and just see what happens when we draw it with no layout specified. Good. Looks kind of like a stained glass window. Uh, but what we see here is a fairly randomized network map of just essentially a whole bunch of different numbers connected to other numbers. So what I'm going to show you is how we can take this data and render it differently. And I believe the default, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe the default in uh, Python is uh, is spring-loaded grout. We'll, we'll use the spring layout. And the way you do that is you essentially call out uh, the index function of whatever the uh, the layout is that you want to use. And it helps if you spell layout correctly. Uh, and I have some of the main layouts that you should become somewhat familiar with over here in this category here. 
So the way you do it is you create an object POS. This is the Pythonic way to do it. And you set it equal to NX dot whatever layout that you want to use. And you're going to make sure that you do that to the G graph. And then all you have to do is add in an extra argument here that just simply says POS and it's going to apply this specific layout. So let's run that. And I think it's going to look kind of similar and it does. It's going to be in a different shape but it's essentially the same concept. Let's see what happens though when we apply it as a circular layout. You're going to see something that looks quite different now. Now what you see is something that actually looks more like a circle. Here what you're seeing is a graph that is being created in order to represent it in a very specific and predetermined image. In this case, a circle, even though it's an oval, we'll just make peace with that. So the other thing that you can do, and that's the circular layout, you can use the shell layout, which whenever I use these two, they, they are determined to create it differently. Uh, but I always find that they, for the data at least that I work with, that they come out looking kind of similar. Uh, that's just my personal take on it. And the other one that you should probably be somewhat familiar with is this Comdom, uh, Kamada Kawai, uh, Kawai layout. And this is going to use a very specific and powerful library in Python called SciPy. If you want to use it, uh, I would recommend uh, at least experimenting with it, but to do so, you need to pip install SciPy, which is spelt right here, S-C-I-P-Y. So I'm going to just simply copy and paste that in, and we'll get a layout that looks, I think with this data set, it should look kind of similar to our Fruchterman Rheingold. Uh, yeah, and the reason why is because we don't see any isolated clusters uh, independent of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second cluster. Hopefully this will allow us to uh, represent something a little different. So we're going to g dot add edge and we're going to add an edge between, let's just add in Tom and Jerry once again, Jerry. And we're going to add an edge for, let's just do one. Uh, let's do Bob and Cindy. All right. Now we should get something that looks a little bit different. I have no idea where Bob and Cindy are in this map. Oh, <laughs> uh, here they are. They're right here in the center. Uh, so what's happened is it's, it's kind of just put these individuals right here in the middle of everything that's happening. Let's go ahead and change this to our spring-loaded graph and see what it looks like now with these individuals added. And this is why I prefer using a spring-loaded graph or a uh, fruchterman Rheingold algorithm. What you see is a, uh, is a better representation, in my opinion, of uh, the data. So you actually have uh, these two over here functioning as a cluster, these two over here functioning as a cluster, and this right here functioning as a cluster. And the reason for that is because this algorithm will actually repel them so that they look like an identifiable cluster. In the next video, we're going to look and see uh, Fruchterman. That should be F-R-U. There we go. Now we can run it. And you see with the fruchterman rheingold algorithm, something kind of similar happening. Uh, this cluster, these two clusters being very easily identifiable. So that's how you can use different layouts to represent data differently in Python. I highly encourage you just to kind of play around with each different layout. They all serve different functions. And I think that you'll find that you'll need to use different layouts for different data sets and however you really want to represent your data. But it is important that whatever you're doing, whether it be something online, something for a scholarly publication, that you make very clear which layout that you're using. Because when you take the data and you represent it visually, you are necessarily applying some kind of individual opinion upon that data to represent it how you want to see it represented. It is therefore important for your audience to know what has gone on to manipulate the data in such a way. So that's a methodological thing you should think about. For right now though, that's how you basically just change some key layouts in Python uh, using NetworkX and matplotlib. It's one of those things that you just need to get out there and just experiment with it. But once you have this understanding of the POS object and how to uh, create it and how to put it into your draw function, you'll find that all you have to do in the future is simply adjust the layout to uh, by simply changing uh, this uh, function right here. And you'll be very happy that you don't have to do a lot of major code changes to make a network map look differently. So that's all for right now. And in the next video, we're going to start looking at cluster analysis uh, with larger network sets, data sets.